this Fordham team. I know they're the low seed here, but they won their tournament last week. They're the, they're the only team that, that won their last game before this week. You know, this is a, as a coach, that a, a team like this worries you to death. You know, they're leading the nation in stolen bases, and they have the uh, conference pitcher of the year pitching against us. And and uh, this is this is a super, super high quality team, super well coached, uh, and give you a different look than than you've gotten the whole season. You know, we run a lot as a team. We've stole, I think, 92 or 93 bases. We led the Big 12 in that category, and these guys have stolen almost double what we have. So, but I've got all the faith in the world in, in Pudge back there that that uh, if we give him a chance to throw somebody out, he's one of the best catchers in all of college baseball. And, and we take a lot of pride in controlling the running game. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm anxious for the challenge, you know, to – to play against a team that runs so much, it's it's not much different than uh, in March Madness when you when you draw a team that that shoots a ton of threes and you're not used to it. You know you gotta you gotta account for it for sure, but you don't you don't change your identity. You know our identity is our identity. We're gonna play the way we play and and just uh, do a good job of controlling the running game and hopefully you know get a couple of mistakes out of this guy who doesn't make many. Other than um, stats, do you have a network of people that you could call and say, hey, what do these guys do? You know what I mean? Is there, is there anything you can go on besides what you see from the stat sheet? Yeah, the, uh, did somebody bring their phone in here? That's me. <laughs> Excuse me, it's my wife. <laughs> she can wait. <laughs> Off the record. <laughs> No, these days with uh, technology, uh, you know, we can literally watch just about every game they've played on on video, and and we get a lot of our scouting stuff for that. It's it's amazing the work that my assistant coaches put into watching video, and uh, like AK said, I'm the guy calling the pitches, so I watch a lot of video too, and and uh, so you get a, a much better idea these days than than in the old days when you had to call around and and talk to the people who played against these guys. But I, I think we've got a really good feel for who they are. And that's why it worries you a little bit, because you know, watching them on video, you know how good they are. And yes. What goes into deciding how you're going to set up your pitching rotation? And, and you talk about these are quality teams, everybody's capable of beating you. Is that a kind of an agonizing get forward thing? You know, we, we kind of. Uh, we felt like this day was coming that we were going to play in a regional for the last two or three weeks, how we were playing down the stretch. And, you know, Nick Snyder has been so good in the midweek games for us. And the, his turn in the conference tournament fell on Wednesday. Uh, he threw the first game down there. Uh, so uh, we, we rolled him out there in a Big 12 championship game on limited pitch count. So we prepared him to pitch this game for the last two or three weeks. And I've got all the faith in the world in Nick Snyder. Uh, I wouldn't be sitting at this table if it wasn't for Nick Snyder. So uh, he's going to get the ball, and, and I feel really good about uh, him going out there. Is that different if you're a, you know, like in other years when you were a two seed or maybe a three seed or whatever? Is it different <coughs> depending on where, you're, where you are coming in? Yeah, you know, the thing you got to be careful of is you don't want to go through a tournament like this and, and not use your best guys. You know, a lot of people get caught up trying to save a guy for a particular team or particular game and all of a sudden the tournament's over and you didn't even use them you know so uh, to win a regional you got to win one game at a time man so we're gonna we're gonna throw our best bullets at him in game one and whatever happens we'll we'll see what game two brings I assume Alec is two then is Cade gonna be three we don't know that yet you know uh, again we don't want to save somebody for a game that might not exist you know so uh, we're going to try and win them one game at a time. If we have to bring Kate in to uh, to win game one in relief, we'll we'll do it, and, and he knows that. How important was it for Nick to kind of get back on track in that game Sunday after not his best outing to, to open the tournament? Super important. I think that was part of the reason why we started him in the championship game because he had been so good all year, and uh, you know, you kind of felt like you hit a speed bump against Kansas down there in the conference tournament. So to get him back out there, a uh, small mechanical adjustment that he made to get back on track, it was super important for him to throw really good against Oklahoma State, which he really did. He 
I think he struck out seven in three innings against one of the best offensive teams in the country. So uh, that was good for his confidence and mine. How did he respond, Randy? Throwing Wednesday and then again on Sunday. I mean, obviously a great Sunday. Yeah, he's uh, awesome. He he, uh, his preparation, his routine. Uh, he's a guy that can can do that. You know, he's gonna uh, his days coming in professional baseball where. You have to pitch more than once a week. You know, you don't get seven days rest normally in professional baseball, and he is more apt to handle that uh, than most people because his arm recovers uh, really, really well. And that's a credit to his preparation and what he does post game and his mental preparation. He, he's a guy that's uh, super capable of doing that. What do you think has been the biggest factor in him making the jump that he has from last year to this season? Just letting him be Nick Snyder, you know. It's uh, I, when I played college baseball, I I played for a guy named Bill Wilhelm at Clemson and coached for Coach Wilhelm. He was my mentor in this business, and his philosophy was to uh, recruit recruit great athletes, teach them how to play the game, but don't don't overcoach them and stifle their athleticism. And so I make sure that none of myself or none of my guys or the little guy standing on the shoulder of every player talking to him between every pitch and every at bat. So we just let Nick be Nick, man. Just go do what you do and and uh, made some uh, suggestions here and there with him, but uh, just don't overcoach him. He's a he's a special talent. He's got a great arm. He's got a great routine and he just has to be Nick and that's what we allowed him to do. Time for a couple more questions for coach. You mentioned earlier this week how um, comforting I was Speak to that a little bit. Um, what what is it about him that makes you so comfortable with him behind the plate and how he handles pitchers and what he does? Yeah, you know our catching philosophy at West Virginia is it's it's your job to make the make sure the pitcher throws good that day, and that's what he does. You know when we recruited Pudge, uh, you know you see the same pitcher throw to two different catchers, and the day he throws the best, it's usually because of the catcher. And he was a special catcher th from the day we saw him and the day we recruited him and just a special personality, great energy. The kids love him. He's everybody's best friend. And hey, oh, by the way, he throws out almost every guy that tries to steal. So uh, he's just been rock solid for us back there. It's not easy to do what he did. He caught every game in a conference tournament. Uh, caught two games in one day, and and that wears on you over time. So you got to try and manage his rest as much as you can. And sometimes you'll see Pudge if he hits a fly ball to center field, he's not running a hundred percent from home to first like uh, Brandon White or somebody would. But uh, Pudge has earned that right uh, over his career. He's got a lot of stock in the company, so to speak, because he's he's earned the right to uh, uh, to rest when he needs to rest. The fact that he swings the bats so well with that bonus. Oh, absolutely. He's uh, his his value from day one was uh, was defensively for us, and uh, for him to be as good offensive player as he is uh, just makes him that that much more special of a player. You talked about I think going into the Big Twelve, how West Virginia has kind of an underdog mentality, especially going against the Texas schools. Do you have to maintain that mentality even as a host? Going yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, you know when Texas A&M or Duke or whoever uh, draws West Virginia uh, in their regional and has to come to Morgantown, don't think they're not happy about it because you know they could get sent to some somewhere who has four or five trips to the College World Series that has hosted regionals before. So they're all excited to be here, and uh, I mean that's what we fight. You know, in all sports here at West Virginia, I think, you know, when when Neil Brown did his press conference and somebody said that West Virginia is the 14th winningest football program of all time in Division One, who knew that, right? But we are, you know, and you look across the board at, at our sports programs, the, you know, uh, the soccer programs is as good as they do, the rifle program win a national championship. Almost all of our sports are top 25 caliber sports. It just seems like we don't get the recognition we deserve up here. And and uh, I think I said a couple weeks ago when we play University of Texas, 
Uh, we could be 56 and 0, and they could be 0 and 56, but they're going to be favored to win the game just because they're Texas. So, yeah, we're always going to be fighting that, but uh, that's great because it's easier to coach and motivate guys as the underdogs, and and I believe we'll, that'll always be the case, at least for uh, at least for my career, probably. All right, coach. We thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on getting to this point.